Good afternoon. Um, County Prosecutor Michael Malley and um, some of my staff, Deputy Chief Patel from the uh, Cleveland Police Department, Greg Patel from the Ohio Department of Public Safety's Intelligence Unit. Um, we're here for the uh, case involving Larissa Rodriguez and the homicide of her son Jordan. Um, we have indicted today Christopher Rodriguez, uh, her companion, her husband, uh, for aggravated murder uh, charges uh, that carry a penalty of 15 to life. So he was indicted today. The other issue we're here for today is the indictment of Nancy Caraballo and Larissa Rodriguez for trafficking in food stamps. In this particular case, that family was, re was to receive from the federal government roughly $1,000 per month in food stamps to feed those children. Larissa Rodriguez, in a scheme with social worker Nancy Caraballo, Ms. Caraballo was buying the food stamps that were intended for that family to feed those children. Today, uh, a grand jury issued additional counts in, pertaining to this, 18 counts about Ms. Caraballo. She worked for an agency uh, that was called Bright Beginnings. Bright Beginnings is a program that is funded by Cuyahoga County in the state of Ohio where individuals work, where we have workers come in and work with families to help them teach their children. Um, Bright Beginnings had a contract with Catholic Charities. Catholic Charities employed Nancy Caraballo. Nancy Caraballo developed a relationship with Larissa Rodriguez where she purchased, it, purchased her food stamps for 50 cents on the dollar. So in the months where Larissa Rodriguez was receiving approximately $1,000 in food stamps, which were given uh, to her by the federal government to feed those children. So there's calculations that are, that are done uh, determining how many children uh, and how much food stamps they should, re they should receive to adequately feed those children. Uh, Ms. Caraballo, who was a mandatory reporter, she had an obligation to report any abuse and neglect of those children. She was actually in a scheme where she purchased the food stamps that were meant to feed those children. Um, Today, again, a, a grand jury issued an indictment against Larissa Rodriguez for this food trafficking scheme, as well as Nancy Caraballo. Um, those charges w were filed this afternoon. Ms. Caraballo is looking at up to 50 years in prison for her uh, role in this. Additionally, if we find, as, through, as the coroner continues to do his invest and continues to further investigate this case, if in fact we can tie this deprivation in food to this child, if we can tie that to his, homi to his homicide in this particular case, we'll be looking at further charges. Um, I'd like to right now introduce, well, first of all, let me thank a couple people who are involved as well. First and foremost, I want to thank the Cleveland Police Department. Um, their officers did a tremendous job in rooting this out, working with the Ohio Department of Public Safety's investigative unit. Um, who investigates food stamp trafficking in our state. Those two entities did a remarkable job in, in, in finding the leads, producing the evidence that has led to today's indictment. I also want to thank the Cleveland FBI for their work in this particular matter, as well as the medical examiner's work in this matter. I want to introduce Deputy Chief Pritel from the Cleveland Police Department. Thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. Just want to mention a couple of things. This is a tragic situation which highlights acts by a couple of perpetrators who were just plain despicable. Obviously, the system in, uh, put in place was taken advantage of, and those who were supposed to benefit from the system, those children, wound up on a short end here. Terrible situation. However, it did bring together law enforcement in a situation where we collaborated, uh, Ohio Investigative Unit, the Cleveland Division of Police, the FBI, Prosecutor's Office, Medical Examiner's Office, and the FBI. And a few of our other partners uh, supported us in this to bring us together so quickly. Uh, these systems are in place to help people who cannot help themselves, and when it's abused, there's greater harm. If anyone's aware of anything like that, please report to proper authorities. Thank you very much. Take questions? So, Mike, uh, you said she was getting $1,000 a month for the children, right? And then, uh, any idea how much was actually trafficked, and any idea like how, how many years or months well, or weeks this The long? indictment is from July of 15 through December of 17, and it includes excess of $10,000, but we have reason to believe that it was going on prior to July of 15. Uh, so, yeah, dating back to at least July of 15, but it, it, it was going on, we believe, before that as well. But in excess of $10,000, that was meant for food for those children. Uh, 
the ditch that's despicable. Was Nancy assigned to Loris's case? Nancy was assigned as a home liaison to work with that family, to work with Larissa. So yes, Nancy was assigned to that family. Um, she was assigned to work with that family to help them educate the children under this program uh, that receives uh, county funding. So uh, yeah, she was assigned to work with that. Had she been doing her job? Had she been there when she said she was going to be there, which she wasn't in many instances, um, and went into the home? As a mandatory reporter, she would have been obligated to report these gross abuses that she was committing upon these children. And uh, Nancy Caraballo didn't do her job. As a result, reports were not made, and these children were, were abused, leading to the death of that four-year-old child. Are you looking into any more cases where food stamp recipients sold to Nancy? Are there other reports, or are you investigating um, that? The investigation continues at this point. Uh, I'll just say that. And the investigation continues, but we have very uh, good evidence in this particular case, which is why we brought it forward. But the investigation continues. What led you to look at this in the first place? Um, I don't want to get into that, but uh, we, we, we began the investigation. Uh, we tracked the food card. We obviously uh, saw where the purchases were made, and you know the investigation followed. Is there any evidence that these children um, or even Jordan Rodriguez were malnourished or uh, deprived of any food? Well, the, the children, the remaining children are in foster care right now, and I don't want to get into the details of their situation, but certainly there's an indication that these children were not as cared for as they, they should have been. And again, you know, the federal government steps in in these cases to provide a safety net so that children can eat uh, appropriately have the nourishment that they need uh, to survive and thrive and it's it's just a disgusting situation where the individuals who are assigned to assist this family perpetrate crimes to deprive and in effect those children of, of the appropriate food nourishment that they that they that they need and it's it's, it's terrible Mike well, just to clarify you, you mentioned so basically this is a so social work with a private agency uh, in that house uh, on a regular basis or expected to be. I mean, what, uh, you know, I mean, obviously you should she, have seen something or sounded some alarms earlier. She was expected to make home visitations as part of her uh, job. That's what this program does. It gets, it gets uh, parent, it, it, it says it, they're like parent teachers. They go in and teach the parents on how to really work with the children. And so part of her job was to be in that home and, and part of her job of being in that home is a mandatory reporter then when she would have seen and we you know the facts are that there was the home was infested with bed bugs and cockroaches and it was a very disgust, disgusting unlivable situation had she been doing her job uh, she would have been obligated to report that but in effect this food stand transaction was is is a bribe she was being bribed to look the other way and how about the uh, child's death uh have, have they determined exactly how the child, and I know you charged Christopher Rodriguez with murder as well. Um, what more can you tell us about how the child died uh, and, and, and when? Uh, it was, it's been determined to be a homicide and uh, the coroner's office continues to do uh, testing so we will get further information as the coroner provides it to us, but it's listed now as a homicide and that's where we're at with it. So the exact cause of death you're still waiting on? Well, it's, it, it's homicidal, but we will find the details of what led to that in the future, but certainly if there's evidence that malnourishment is a part of it, certainly we'll be reviewing this situation again. Can you explain what kind of abuse that these children are under? Well, anytime you have a situation where children are being deprived of food, um, they're forced to live in unlivable conditions, um, that's an abuse that no child should have to endure, and certainly that was uh, very evident in this particular case, um, and I'll leave it at that. No physical or was there physical? I'll just leave it at that, that we, we, there's clearly with the homicide that we believe that there was some physical issues, but um, there was many issues in that home. With respect to the boyfriend, you said he was indicted on aggravated murder, but that was <clears throat> um, life? Murder? No, just straight murder. murder. If okay. I misspoke, he's in, indicted with murder B. What do you guys think, that, what role did he play? We're not getting any details of the case, but we believe he was uh, very involved in the situation. The as well as the disposal, as well as the uh, disposal of the uh, body in that location. So not only the disposal, which I think had been previously reported, 
transported, but also in the actual death of the child. You guys think he's we, we believe he was in the home and he was a participant. What kind of bond is he being held on? Pardon me? The bond, how much? Uh, do not know yet. On, um, he's in Medina County. Yeah, he's in Medina County. Obviously, uh, he's not been arraigned yet here in Cuyahoga County. Um, that will occur in the near future, and uh, we anticipate Miss Caraballo being picked up uh, as we speak. Can you spell her last name for us, please? 